and Christopher Papa Smithy Smith. Super long barreled names, guys. Uh, welcome to the desk. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Just had some fun watching the 1v1s and uh, excited to jump in. Yeah, they saved the Commonwealth trio for last. So <laughs> excited to get cracking. Non traditional Commonwealth, in fact. I always forget Canada's part of the club. Anyways, let's quickly run down the lineups. Burning onto the rift, representing Team Fire and setting everything ablaze. It's the LCK All Stars. Smeb, Bengi, Faker, Prey, and Mad Life. And looking to freeze out their opponents, representing Team Ice, the LMS All-Stars. In the top lane, it's Ziv. In the jungle, it's Karsa. Maple, your mid, and the bot lane duo will be Bebe and Albus. All right, we'll have to find out how well the LMS All-Stars will hold up. Currently, Team Ice, 150 points on the board ahead of Team Fire. And this matchup, uh, it's full of top tier talent. Um, Papa Smithy, when you look at all of the players, maybe on the LCK squad, with the exception of Mad Life, everybody really performing well uh, throughout the course of the split. It's stacked and there's a lot of loyal members. It's basically the Korean fans have always voted for kind of the same players, specifically Prey and Mad Life, the bot lane duo for the Korean duo, was voted in as a duo way back in May 2013, the first ever All-Star event in Shanghai. And the three times they've been able to vote a full roster, it's always been Prey and Mad Life. So nice to see some of the old names represented. And then Smeb, obviously, stepping up massively, specifically in 2016, and being rewarded with that top lane spot. Yeah, and Mad Life is just an absolute legend. This guy has been around forever. He's been a fan favorite forever. Kind of reminds me a little bit of an insect in that, you know, people people name plays after this guy. They call it Mad Life, and you play someone yeah. out of a jump. This hey. is something that this guy is known for. His thresh, his blitz are, are just incredible. That's it. Before the insect, there was the Mad Life. Yep. So those are the duos of big names. And it's great to see him represented, obviously, Shoddy performances, you'd have to say, in the summer season. Was great in spring, yep. fell down in summer. We're still waiting to see where he'll go in 2017. 1% win ratio, oh, the lowest that... of all players attending All-Star 2016. Let's turn our attention over to Team Fire. They're not going to be a pushover. Uh, LMS has been a particular challenge to make that uh, Team Ice, rather. Uh, at the last few international events, LMS is currently 5-1 and one versus uh, LCK. When you look at the Flash Wolves players, Casa, and, of course, the mid laner Maple. Uh, both of these guys, Korean kryptonite, or is that an, a, a stretch? I mean, perhaps a little bit of a stretch, but you can't argue with the results. Specifically, the Flash Wolves team have traditionally stuck up, whether against LCK opponents, including SKT, multiple times. So while you look at the squads and you can't look past all the class on the lineup of the LCK team, there's no slouches on the LMS side either. No, there certainly are, but we all know when it comes down to the big finals, it's always the Koreans. These are the guys who show up in the big matches, and that's still early in the tournament, that's so true. maybe the LMS still has a chance. And, you know, Bebe, to speak about him a little bit, he, he hasn't won an LMS title, but he has won three GPLs and a world championship. And his best days, I don't think they're behind him. His, his recent results with J-Team has shown that he is a very, very good AD. Uh, these guys were expected to qualify for worlds. They didn't. But he is considered by most to be the best AD in the region. And it's just lovely seeing the highlights like you saw from season two. You know, three of us were watching the game back then. So much has changed. Yep. But BB still is seen as the top AD carry from his region. TPA, you know, J, now J Team, they've always had this man anchoring the roster and he's innovated a lot. The Blue Ezreal build that everyone remembers was started by BB. Yeah, was started playing Ezreal back then, playing Ezreal today. We'll find out if he plays it in uh, 2016 as well uh, to wrap out the year. Now, something we have to touch on, it is going to be an uphill struggle. Four out of the five LCK players were in the semifinals of Worlds. That's true. Um, and, you know, the caliber of players is going to be very impressive. Uh, what do you think these guys are going to get their hands on in picks and bans? We've not seen Ivern. There was some excitement around it. We've seen the Assassins band out and Azale. We're just jumping into picks and bans right now. And I mean, I for one am excited to see some of these Assassins unleashed. I think there should be a ban on the Assassin bans. You're not <laughs> allowed to take them off the table. I want to see Katarina. I want to see Faker playing champions like LeBlanc. See what this guy can do on it because he's a LeBlanc god. He hadn't lost in so many games. What was it, 26 something? Some ridiculous amount of games that he'd won in a row. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's already gone. I mean, the power speaks for itself in yeah. the pick, and it's Faker. So clearly, yeah. you're going <laughs> to ban it away. I want to see how LCK are going to approach this tournament, because so far, you'd have to say the 5v5 game has been pretty on the line. It's been pretty much serious picks on both sides. I want to see the Jarvan back from Bengi. Remember, Faker and Bengi, the three-time world championship duo, are breaking up after this offseason. Bengi is going somewhere other than SKT. So let's see some of these power duo picks that have kind of 
been the trademark of the last three and a half years. And as an NALCS fan, I want to see who's going to perform because we know as this off Scouting fans, grounds over exactly. here. I yeah. see how it is. I see how LCK it is. LCK is, is that LCS farm team, oh. you know, so whoever, whoever was, plays well, you know, we're going to pick them up and, and we can look forward to that for next year. You so. know what the funny thing is? A year ago, Froskuren stood in your spot and made the same joke. <laughs> and now it's NA, so the Koreans have to go somewhere. And I Ooh, guess, we got to take our yeah. wins where we can get them, Papa <laughs> Smithy, because it's not at Worlds. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, we'll find out if uh, any more farming can be done from this series, gentlemen. Uh, Rain got Thresh and Italy banned out by the LCK All-Stars. LeBlanc, Syndra, Rise. Again, sort of familiar-ish picks, uh, with the exception of maybe Thresh, you can argue. And a first pick, Nautilus. Uh, not sure about that, but why not? I'm yeah. guessing it's going to be a top lane Nautilus. Yeah. Obviously, that's the big story with Courage of the Colossus. It's still a very decent pick in the bot lane, so it is definitely a flex pick between those roles. There's no Kuro on the roster, so mid lane Nautilus probably not coming out, but a power pick and one that Smeb has played in the past. Yeah, and it certainly can flex around. I definitely think dependent upon what support is, is, is picked, you can have some pretty good matchups for Nautilus in the support position, and it is really strong with the Courage of the Colossus plus your W shield. Uh, those two stacked up just make trades ridiculous. It's really hard to punch through those shields, but I was a little bit surprised to see Nidalee and Thresh off the table. Nidalee is actually, at, I believe, lowest win rate jungle in the game right now and is going to be getting some pretty serious buffs in coming patches. So uh, to see it still prioritized as a ban is interesting. But there would be no surprise if, and it looks like the Rek site is going to be locked in for Bang. He's still going to be erring towards the more reliable, another Courage abuser. So, so far we have double Courage of the Colossus, which not so much. Okay, so not going to be a Courage team for LCK. No, it's not. Uh, this combo of Nautilus Rek site didn't work out too well for Team Ice when they used it earlier today. Uh, Europe against NA, of course, but slightly more skilled play. Players, this Might have been a around. player problem there, <laughs> Quickshot. You can't blame the champions. <laughs> we'll find out whether or not uh, the answer to that question yep. is solved. But Prey, Twitch, I mean, that's fantastic. I'm already excited about the matchup. And Papa, we've actually been talking about which AD carry Prey was going to play all day long, and Twitch was one of the guys. I mean, he's a seminal Twitch player. Back in Season 2, when he was first voted in Season 2, Season 3, was known for the Twitch. Not his most play, that was Corky, mainly because, of course, moving towards the League system in 2015 and 2016, Twitch went down in priority, but Twitch is way up there in priority. In this tank meta, we find ourselves in a tank buster, now having the longer ability to go into that ambush and being able to set up, can still be using the same assassination role, so good to see the Twitch, but it's back to the old meta with the Jin on the side of LMS. Yeah, and, and Jin, you know, a lot of people were talking about, oh, a lethality, that's going to kind of kill off the Jin because it's not as strong as the, as the armor pen, but I actually disagree, and I've been seeing a lot of successful builds. I have been seeing Ghostblade builds still be successful, but you can even go the old kind of like Essence Reaver, Rapid Fire, IE, those builds work very well too. But it's not the four long sword. It's not the flexible no. back time. It feels like if you can get a BF sword, still a very strong laning AD carry. If you can get a completed, upgraded uh, Dirk or the Caulfield's Warhammer, still can be powerful. But you have to say, the fact that he had the flexibility, mm -hmm. just buy as many long swords as his hands could fit, <laughs> and then come back and finish items later, really helped the Jin. As maybe we're going to start seeing some of those picks I was hoping for. So let's see if Faker will shot a unique champion this game. All these big smiles on the side of the LCK All Stars. That's not um, a unique pick. That's all the way down, unique. having some good chuckles. It's not going to be anything super exciting. However, this means Nautilus support and Rumble top. Obviously, Smeb going to be burning through that top lane poppy. And it's oh, Katarina! Oh, here we go. We have Katarina, ladies and gentlemen, for the 2016 All-Star. And it's such a gambit to take a teleport mid laner against Faker. Now, it is the victor. This is actually not the worst matchup for the Katarina. Obviously, back in the day, pre-rework, this would be a really painful one. But people have been theorizing that this is one of the lanes that Katarina can stand through. And guess what? Nothing's changed about the late game resets. Katarina is a beast in the late game. And this champion, I feel like the skill cap went even higher. I think that it's such a difficult champion to master. And as such, you won't necessarily have a lot of experience playing against someone who is extremely well practiced on this champion. And I'm very excited to see how Maple performs and also how Madlife is going to do on this Nautilus here in the bot lane because I do think they have the all-in potential against the Jin, against the Bard. And look, they kept the last pick for mid lane. That's pretty predictable, especially with a mid lane like Maple. When they committed to the Rumble, it's worth noting that when you look at CC, you know, interrupts were always the word you would use against a Katarina. There's a Rek'Sai knockup. There's Nautilus who has a lot to himself, but this is going to be a support Nautilus. It's going to be a squishy Nautilus. If Nautilus dies early in a fight, gives yeah. up a reset, no, but not really much else on this team to deal with that Katarina. Especially true when you consider who's handling that Nautilus, not the strongest of forms that we've seen from 
Mad Life himself. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the last time here on day one of All Star 2016, hashtag Fire Win or hashtag Ice Win. Fire currently trail by 50 points, and this match is worth 100. Will this be your Katarina, meaning 0 5 0, yeah. or will this be the other team's Katarina, 5 0? We're about to find out as we load up for Summoner's Rift here in Barcelona, Spain. Crowd are hyped. I'm hyped. Always good to see these mixed roster rosters from the LCK. You follow some of the off-season moves, and it seems like we've got some all-star teams just in the regular sense in terms of KT and SKT. There's always a bit more personality when the nation's coming me. Yeah, it certainly is, and, and I think this has to be exciting for the LMS fans because they have traditionally done pretty well against the LCK, and this is really the LMS dream team. This is you know, the best players in each of the roles from the LMS region. I think it's very similar to how NA did with, with their kind of uh, team for All-Star, so it, it's really exciting to see these players perform. I mean, the only name that might surprise Albus over Sword Art to more fans that have watched only the big international events, but the word is, you know, watching from what I've seen, the limited LMS I've seen, but especially talking to the experts, it hasn't been Sword Art's year. You know, Sword Art definitely last year was leading the pack when it came to LMS supports, but it's been much more Albus's time in 2016, so it's actually no big feat to see him here at support. And what a champion for it to be your time on. Bard in game one of the 5v5 Summoner's Rift. Um, get some of those uh, ultimates down, lock people up with your Q, and, and see if you can get a good advantage. I mean. It's going to be tough against this Nautilus if he ever gets caught out, but range advantage will be in favor of LMS. Taking a look at the map and how it starts off, it looks like red buff starts for both uh, respective junglers. And we'll keep our eyes on where Bengi and Kasa decide to prioritize their next steps. And we have to remember that you can still do the two camp level three here. Uh, and we are seeing Karsa go for that path right now. He could look for a very early top lane gank on this map. And this is something that's so tough to deal with because you can show up so early uh, with this level three, with the red buff, that it's very difficult to deal with both for the top lane and the bottom lane. I think you have to go for that particular path, the one buff into the golems, just because specifically, if you see that you, basically, you enter lane the top lane, if you see that the enemy top laner hasn't warded, you're bright for the level three gank. If they ward, you know, what you have that information, you follow your path. And these are both mana-less junglers. Speaking of junglers, you could see Bengi sniffing around bot lane, but for now, not gonna be any gank attempts. But they're all waiting. They don't want to path over to their blue side necessarily because blue buff transfers will be coming up soon. Yeah, seems to be the case. Elvis already left lane to potentially help out Karsa. Showing a good understanding, at least, of the threat on the level three. His wave was pushed in, so safe enough for BB to farm. Um, by the way, we kept uh, getting glimpses of Maple being shoved into that lane. Five CS to 15, a lot in front of. I think this is expected. Low level Katarina yeah. doesn't have a full complement of uh, spell rotation available. And obviously, the range advantage for Victor. And, and the CS is lying to you somewhat, right? There's still a good chunk of minions here. We'll have to see how well he does at picking these up under turret. But if he can get the majority of these minions down, uh, then he's going to be okay. And we also have to remember he has the TP to come back and pick up some of these minions, get an early base, try to pick up some MR. I imagine he's going to be building an Abyssal early, something like that. Uh, and try to be able to sustain the early game and then get back and just farm it out. Not complete agreement on item build because you're so flexible with your AD and AP ratios on Katarina. Uh, Gunblade is always yeah. seen as a really big pick. Gunblade into Guardian Angels actually something people have been messing with. But these trades you're seeing on your screen are indicative of the fact that Katarina is still a melee champion when it comes to the auto attacks, a bit like Cassid and the other pick that we see in the mid lane quite a bit as a melee. And also the other risk there is that you push with your Q when you're going in as Karsa is right behind fire here. All right, Prey and Madlife need to get away. Good dredge line from Madlife. Throws down the shield of the Titans. Roth, Albus and Mimi gonna push forward. Good flash. Madlife was able to flash away one summoner spell for the exchange, and that was a pushing lane. In actual fact, all three of LCK's lanes of have been pushing very heavily straight out the gates. And, and Mad Life does have to blow the flash there, but it was well played. I think the hook immediately onto the Lee Sin, denying him from getting onto Prey, saves his AD summoner, and yes, he had to blow his, but still I think he's totally fine with that. One of the biggest changes you see for Katarina is that when you go for those big trades, when you shun Po in, previously you did your little bit of damage and you had to walk away and you traditionally took three, four auto attacks, a spell. Now you can W before you go for the trade, Shunpo in, Shunpo out. 
only take a little bit of damage, and thus the trades in mid lane are going better and better for the new Katarina. And what else are we going to be looking for in terms of the trading fighting pattern? Obviously, that's the way out. But what is Maple looking to do against Evicta? This is a matchup that we're now seeing in the new preseason, and hopefully going to see more of over the next weekend. And I personally don't think he's really looking uh, for a kill here early on. It, you know, unless Karsa can get behind the victor or something like that. It's more about just farming out, looking to roam, looking to be able to get control of the lane through that, make plays around the map, and, and try to take over, hopefully, in teamfights. And I completely agree, Zell. Basically, what he's trying to do here is farm out a gunplay. Yep. That's what he wants to do, get through the lane, not lose his turret, and get a gunplay. Just because you think of Victor, and you're like, wait, Victor doesn't have a stun to stop the, the ultimate. Why not go for the gank? Ooh, the trading line. here. Connects onto BBE. Magical Journey is available, but look at that great trade. And just look at that. The Courage of the Colossus, he lands a CC, pops his W. It's so hard for them to actually return oh, fire, but Azale, look at Bengi. He's coming from behind. Elvis is in trouble. Knocked up from the Unborrow. Down to 100, and that's first blood to pray. That was so well done. They have Mad Life go in, force out the Magical Journey, so that was actually off cooldown. Bengi is lying in wait, comes in. They get the first blood. So well done there. Sort of flexible pathing available for a Rex side. Carson's in mid lane to Maple back six. up. Very quick channel on that Death Lotus for Maple. He's forced to flash away. Faker looking to turn it around. 1v2. Gravity Field does not stun Carsa. Death Ray puts a lot of damage down. And Faker uses ghosts and forces two away. But the point I was going to get to is that the Gravity Field is still that interrupt on ability. So you cannot Death Lotus if the Victor Old is up and expected to go out. We're seeing here what happened. They went for the first trade. I thought this was over. The LMS thought this was over, but that's when Bengi pathed in. They knew they had the line in. Alba's still very squishy on that bard, and very nice stuff from the LCK team. Yeah, and just forcing out that magical journey prior to that was so important. It means there's no way out for the bard. Long cooldown at early levels with no CDR. Uh, just really well executed there. Smart stuff from the LCK. And w with Faker surviving in the mid lane too, bad goes to worse for the LMS. Absolutely. Already a 1,000 gold advantage between Fire and LCK. Uh, we caught a glimpse of Smith. He's up in the top lane. Sorcerer issues completed and teleport available for a Ziv who's used to go back to lane. We've actually not looked at that lane a whole lot, but it has been playing out as expected. Rumble shoves in Poppy. Poppy falls behind early. Wait for Poppy to make teleport play. And that's a pretty good summary of what's going to happen <laughs> for the next few minutes. Exactly. Once you know the abilities for Rumble, you know he's going to have the push. Victor predictably has the push in mid lane. The surprise for a lot of you is probably as we see Mad Life just going for the most aggressive ward possible. <laughs> That's a Rek'Sai right behind him. He's here. Ignite, uh, sorry, Flash for Albus. He's got a magical journey, but a short distance. He gets to safety, but there's no support from the rest of LMS. Yeah, and they're going to have to back off the turret because Prey has pushed up the minion wave. They're very uh, vulnerable here if they actually stick around. And even though they're against double TP, both are down. They have the cooldowns there, so they're free to make this move, but the only surprise I was going to get to is that Twitch, now with the ability for the W to stay on the field, does actually have the ability to push in a Jin, which is not something that could have happened with the way that previously, where previously you just tossed the Venom cask and get a couple of stacks, get a quick trade in with Expunge. But the fact that Twitch can now push brings another element to his game, and it's what's really helped shore up his laning phase. I love the W because not only can it help with, with pushes, but it can be used to really complicate trades from your opponents. If they want to go in and get a couple autos off, if they're trading inside the W, what do they do? Do they stand in it, let you get that six stack expunge? Do they run away where you're going to move forward and get free autos? It, it becomes very complicated for your opponent. I mean, cr it crazily becomes a zoning tool. Yeah. Okay? It basically becomes something like the Ziggs Minefield, which once you start getting level six, Infinity Edge, and the Static Shiv, it might not do the immediate damage of the Ziggs Mines, but the follow-up damage from Twitch has never been a problem for the rat. No, absolutely not. Prey, of course, maxing that E, getting a lot of damage built up. Sun in his the eyes there. There we go. Just uh, the simplest shots are the easiest to miss. <laughs> uh, but Ziv was actually shoving Smeb in. Got that Spectre's Cow, got some MR, and going to pull some supports up. Here's Carson. Think he's coming, though. Fight. It's a 2v1. Easily pick up the kill onto Smeb. And they just walk away. Bengi a little too late to the party. Yeah, super clean stuff from the LMS, even though that was a cross-team thing. Down bottom, the though. The dress so line! Wow, that was interesting. Maybe he got <laughs> pulled out, but still clicked and got past. I don't actually think I've ever seen that interaction yeah. before. <laughs> Movement priority is always an amusing thing, but up top, as you mentioned, for the moment that he had the Spectre's Cow was starting to stand up to the trades, and this was just really clean. HQ, Flash Wolf, doesn't matter if there's any team rivalry there, because these two, were of one mind. Yeah, that was beautifully done, but oh, Mev is bot. He's he going on Albus. He, that's such an easy kill. Probably gets to secure. And look, Dredge Line 
It's still a hook champion. It's not the Thresh we were hoping for, but the Nautilus has the hooks. Mad Life has always been great at those line skill shots, and they're profiting off the bot line here is LCK. Yeah, and I mean, you're saying Mad Life's a little bit rusty, so you make the hook a little bit wider, maybe uh, two or three times as wide, you're going to be a little bit more accurate. You know, I, I like it. Can't fault the logic. It's going to be working. <laughs> zero, zero, two for Mad Life. And it looks like Tal first blood secured as well, just as 10 minutes press. Azale, things are looking up here for Team Fire. Plus 2k, tower advantage, kill advantage. Good start. It's not bad. It's not bad. You know, if you're a, a Team Fire fan, an NA fan, LCK fan, you know, all the same, really, really the same one region. Did you hear Kobe's uh, theory earlier, the NA stress? You know? Yeah, oh. it's, it's beautiful. We, we all came together, you know. How are we going to win All-Stars? It's brilliant. We'll draft the Faker. There we go. Draft the Faker, draft the LCK. <laughs> Seems to work at Worlds. Uh, three, three out of four times, it worked <laughs> yeah, out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, well, all that uh, shenanigans is happening elsewhere. Maple teleported to push Faker out of lane, and that allowed LMS and Team Ice to pick up the Infernal Dragon. So that is a small solace. Uh, it's a late game investment, much like a Katarina. It's a mid to late game investment. Mid game more heavily than late, but um, still no uh, a gun blade and that Negatron cloak. That's going to slow the build down a whole lot. Unfortunately, the investment, it seems stocks are crashing over here <laughs> in the mid lane for the LMS. Uh, things are not looking so good. Uh, you know, it, it does have a late game, obviously, on the Katarina, but. Victor, no slouch in the late game, turns out, Bob. Well, and also, the futures market against <laughs> yeah, LCK yeah. teams has never really been one you wanted to invest in. Kind of crashes around the 30, 35 minute mark. So, we'll see. He's being forced into the Abyssal because of the trade and the harass he's taking from Faker. The, the build path for the Victor's not changed much. Rylai's, importantly, hasn't been changed on this patch. We'll change on the next patch. So still, the two item core, very powerful Some for the Victor. Some shenanigans down here in the bot lane. They're setting up by the Blast Cone. Oh, please do something fun. Please do something fun. Oh, they got spotted though. Hit it, hit it. Nope, still not doing it. Frey's gonna be able to camouflage his way to safety. Ooh. No, how my breath. No Lee Syndrome today for Casa. I wonder what that uh, LMS squad were trying to do. I mean, blast into the red, red buff and, and surprise somebody. You sit there and Dead. think about the mechanics behind Blast Cone and Magical Journey and your mind certainly <laughs> wanders, but no such luck that time. Uh, not yet. I'm sure we'll get a chance later in the game. For now, pressure is on Faker. Gets caught out by the Tempered Fate. Here comes Casa. Faker's able to flash away. Albus, he fired the Cosmic Binding just a moment too early. Casa going to hop over the wall to the Raptor Camp. Still, both summoners down there on Faker. That's a, a nice play there from Albus. He's able to move mid lane, nails the ult. Both summoners down for Faker. Yeah, and Casa has flash available himself. So the kick will probably be lethal onto this Victor. Some future event might be now. All right, Death Lodge is fully charged. Maple's going to flash away from the hook. He manages to get a lot of damage down. Still has access to that preparation. Prey pulls the cast just a little short. Spray and Prey contaminate. Flash! Oh, he got him! For the kill! Prey gets it! Oh, and that is huge. Prey is 3 and 0 oh now of 30 CS. This guy is going to be massive. But look at this full court press coming from the LCK. It's not just the solo kill bot. They're invading the jungle in the mid lane, Rumble Sack lane, ages away. And this is certainly escalating very quickly. Tower fell earlier. A couple more kills. Red buff stolen away. Vision is being pushed in deep. Look at the LMS jungle. LCK. Uh, beginning to dismantle LMS uh, right at the seams. And they're so good at pushing advantages as soon as they get it, they're not gonna give LMS the time to farm it up, to hit their item breakpoints and become relevant. They have the advantage now and they will push it now. That's exactly what they're doing, turning their attention to the top lane. Now Zip is gonna be the next potential target. Uh, no real support oh. though from the rest of the map, taking a look at Smith, he snuck his way up there. What about the LCK? All stars up to if they change target, it appears to be the case. Oh, this is going to be terrifying. Equalizer goes out, knocked up by the mine, caught by the hook. Praise in a rampage 4 0. And they're already out of the laning phase with the Nautilus, so whatever struggles there would have been at level 1 2 are now a thing of the past. Walking around, acquiring targets, mad life. Don't even need to hit a hook once you have access to the depth charge and uh, taking over the map. Remember, with the long respawn times, it's very important to deny the blue buff. The big camps, gold lead will only grow for the LCK. Very interested to see what Mad Life is actually going to go for next. Will he get a redemption of his own? Will he go for a Knight's Vow to help out Prey, who's already fed? Uh, some of these new items for support, I think, are very, very powerful and pretty affordable early on. 
the build paths are really nice too. Crystal Embracer yep. is now a big build that's building health. Cross the face checks. Ooh, manages to sidestep the shock at least. Gets out to safety, but LMS 15 minutes in are so far behind, and this is not quite uh, what I expected. I did think the LMS squad is going to put up a little bit more resistance against LCK, despite the Koreans obviously being the favorites in the matchup. I mean, Korea is looking good, but we're not at FF20 points yet, Trevor. <laughs> not just yet. Maple's going to dash away after the preparation. Once again, Shun close to safety. Costa finds Faker, gets the kill, manages to pick it up. There's a knock-up from the Unburrow. Bengi's running for his life. Another Sonic Wave connects. Maple's looking for more. Preparation into Shunpo. Maple's on the board. One kill, one assist. And the LMS are really hoping this is where it begins. Finally, Maple is on the board. Had to go super defensive build with the Negatron first into the nearest large rod. But this is some of the new Katarina mechanics coming in. Double Shunpo available. Finally catch Faker with his summoners down. And it's two important kill involvements for the LMS. And it's Corsa that gets the glory, but it's Maple who did such a good job surviving, delaying, never allowing Bengi to land that stun, which set up those two kills, gets them on the board, and gets them right back into it. Now Maple's going to need to finish off this thrift shopping. Maybe he's going to flash Ooh, away. He's coming in. More. Exhaust comes up. Very good tempered face. Double teleports coming in. Maple throws down the Death Lotus. Gets the second kill. Another follow-up from BB. Katarina is 2-1-2, and, and if it were solo queue, I'd be saying forfeit at 20. <laughs> well, it's not the way you thought it looked, but it is <laughs> close now. That's four straight kills for the LMS. The Rylize is completed for Maple. It's going to be so sticky, really hard to get away from this. And they overcommit. They don't respect the double TP. They both come in. Bebe's able to disengage. The ultimate lands from Bard. And it's a disaster for the LCK. Overextending in, ult in multiple lanes was what got LCK the lead early. But finally, double teleports. The, early, the extra goal to pick up the Rylize. Just the right spot for Team Ice to come and collapse on top. And you have to feel like even though there's that 2,500 gold lead, the tide is starting to shift to LMS. Especially if another Dragon can get picked up. Uh, Cloud Drake so far, zero contest from the LCK. And this is going to be a clean safe collection. That's an important one. Uh, sometimes Cloud Drake isn't very important, but here, when acquiring a target on the side of LCK is so important for the Poppy, for the Katarina, for the Engage, there isn't much disengage on the side. We mentioned it. Nautilus, okay, can solo down, can solo CC someone, and there's one knockup from Rek'Sai, but otherwise, whether you acquire the Rek'Sai, so whether you acquire the Rumble, the Twitch, or the Victor, those are all great targets to burst down for Zima. Assuming they survive, because while they're going to target to burst down, all three of them can burst down Team Ice. So if uh, the LMS are not in the right place, I mean, with the exception of Poppy, those are pretty squishy targets. Yeah, they are. And a lot of, I think, LMS's success comes from picks. You have to use the Bard well. And with a straight up 5v5 with the Nautilus and, and Prey on this Twitch, getting up in your team's face against Jin and the Bard, they're not going to be nearly as effective. So they need to get the long-range CC, they need to get these picks and start the fights on their terms, or they're going to be shredded by what I think is just a stronger 5v5 team by team. And Prey was still piecing together the two-item build that gives everyone so much tether, so so much terror, sorry, the Hurricane and the Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge going to be coming relatively shortly, and then the, the team game, the 5v5 especially, becomes basically, can you stop the Twitch? Can you lock him down? Can you CC him? Get rid of his front line? Because if Twitch is free-hitting on that two-item spike, not much you can do. And the scary part of that is there's two more threats, but LMS looking for one of those picks. <laughs> the target is Prey. They need to get the vision. Camouflage is going to help by some time. Shunpo into death. Lotus Prey gets tagged. Taken down by Kasa. Maple's looking for the jumps. The Shunpo's as well. Kasa survived the slither. Faker's running up. He's ghosted him for the fight. A magical journey by some time. And it looks like the LMS have managed to get away. They invested a lot, but they do get their kill. They may, may just lose a towel for the trade. And even though LCK had an aggressive war down, we didn't see the TP from Smurf. They answer with a turret, like you said. So still going to be some more global gold going the way of LCK. But it's been LMS on the front foot for the past five minutes. And it's been nice picks and nice teamwork. And the Bard opening up plenty of avenues. Yeah, three-man squad coming in from behind. 
<laughs> the ulti misses, the Q misses, it doesn't matter. They had more than enough. And look at the damage from Katarina there. Ultimate actually does more damage than the previous version and just too much for Prey to get away. And the extra ticks on the passive wasn't enough to take down the Lee Sin, but they healed when they saw Victor walking into screen to ensure that everyone got the hell out of dodge. And we reset and yeah, does really feel like things are starting to come together for specifically the Katarina but more generally, the LMS. The thing is, Maple's gonna have to use all of these like positive swings in his favor yeah. to overcome a 3,000 gold lead. Oh, tries a pretty opportunistic death load cycle, because that was a flash ulti, um, and then forced to back away. Summer spell down, but still very sticky. Call what you want it, opportunistic, yeah. over aggressive, optimistic. Reckless. I might just call it a little bit bad, but uh, in, in this case, it's not gonna work out for Maple and Prey gets away. Trying to be positive. Yeah, as yeah. They're trying to. <laughs> Such a sunny disposition you have over there, Trevor. My glass is always half full, gentlemen. Yeah. And uh, as it stands. Maple's is flash empty. <laughs> that was, I like that one. All right, uh, Ruta to Bengi, a little bit of damage from Maple. Follows up with that secondary Shumpo. Bengi, no real uh, defensive stats to speak of. A little bit of HP from that Cinder Hulk. And looking on the rest of the items, again, no real surprises, gentlemen. Um, keep looking to see if there's something new, but there's not just yet. And uh, BB seems to be going the Essence Reaver build. Once he picks up next, currently sitting on 1500 gold. The big story where you can really start to see the shift in this game is that five minutes ago, maybe 10 now, there was aggressive wards down for LCK. They took early turrets. They pushed Vision onto the side of the LMS, but they haven't been able to actually send two members without getting picked off, or and they've been ganked so frequently around the map. The pressure has really gone down, and then we start getting the items onto these carries. Three team carries. All right, Faker's in trouble. Knocked down. Really easy combination. Yeah. Not enough time to do anything against Faker. And they get his flash too. That's just fantastic here from the LMS, and Karsa and Maple have been working so well together. These guys really are carrying the hopes of the LMS. But it's situations like that where you start to see the difference when it's, difference when it's an all-star team of Koreans rather than necessarily a team that practices mm -hmm. together. Because Faker was just sheer overextended. Didn't have the vision, so he parked himself up. Only had one very shallow pink ward and was picked off by this pick comp coming through from ice. And as the game goes on, we see the really high ratios that have been added to the kit of Katarina, making her even more deadly in the late game. It's only starting to put together damage, and it was mostly tankiness in the early game, but it's coming soon. Albus runs the magical journey long enough to get away. Bengi didn't really have a damage uh, support with him. It was just mad life looking for a hook, but none available. Smeb joins the rest of Elsa Kian's mid lane. And looks like he's going to try to shove down this uh, wave at the very least. This is where I'm really excited for a 5v5 fight because the items are coming together. Infinity Edge, Hurricane, complete for the Twitch. You leave Twitch alone, he's going to kill your team. Katarina, she might not look like she has the items, but she's getting to pretty much the same place. Once Reset Town hits, we know what comes next. So whichever of these hyper carries goes unchecked in the next fight, I think will take over the game. Yeah, certainly. And and although LMS has been winning some of these skirmishes, the LCK, they're still ahead in gold. And, and their 5v5 is so powerful. And we haven't even seen the kind of Smev Jin interaction where Jim pops his ultimate and then the Rumble ultimate just gets dropped on his head. And it's so tough to deal with that. That is indeed. Smev's got an hourglass available. That's going to buy a few seconds time. Ziv and Maple looking for more. Flashes away from the Death Lotus. Is going to have a plan to knock him to safety and eventually. Ziv and Maple run down Smith while Karsa gets jumped on his side of the jungle. So it feels like LMS are throwing resources at Maple to continue pushing him ahead. Yeah, and, and Smeb, he survived for a bit, but he needed to drop his ult before the Zonias. You need to have damage kind of going out while you're sitting there in the immunity. And LCK are trying to force this dragon. Looks like they're going to get it for free. We'll give time, though, for Ice to set up some vision around Baron. And this isn't the really big objective you want when you see two members sent top at 23 minutes. Usually, it's an inner turret. Usually, it's yeah. a much bigger advantage in multiple lanes, but they're just snowballing their duo and actually get up a turret. So overall, the gold lead firmly with the LMS in that particular interaction. Yeah, tower plus kill. That was actually the LMS's first tower of the game. Fell around 23.55 seconds. So mid and bottom have been shoved and, and some chip damage. Nothing secured just yet. Uh, gentlemen, Kosa's Lee Sin has gone Black Cleaver after Warrior. Um, that's optimistic, wouldn't you say, Azale? <laughs> it's, it's aggressive. 
I like it. It's all stars. Let's let's get the damage builds. You know, you can compare the two Rengar builds today. I would say almost everyone preferred the Assassin build. Oh yes. Lee Sin, get a Ghost Blade. Get whatever you want. It's it's free reign for item builds. I like the offensive build. And I really like going extra damage on the Lee Sin when you have a Katarina, just because you get one person pretty low. Katarina does the cleanup. The reset starts to come through, so Katarina can profit from the extra damage the Lee Sin will be doing. And also, when you have four early kills, uh, well, not Drop. that early, but this guy is snowballing, he's doing very well, and when you're ahead on Lee Sin and you build damage, you can just one round carries. If you get in, in on the Twitch, you can assassinate this guy. And while the redemption is complete, actually a completed locker is really important here for the LCK. Aegis is gone, we don't have the Aegis into locker build anymore in terms of just the AoE magic was this short. You can get the selfish stats of the new Aegis, but the locker, and specifically the massive shoot up to over 600 at highest level, 600 extra effective health may be the difference between Katarina ripping through an entire team or just being stuffed at the start. And, and that's kind of the name of the game for supports now. You have the Locket Shield, you can get Face of the Mountain Shield, you have Redemption, so it's all these healing and extra kind of shields that you're not necessarily going to expect. <laughs> Frey's going to use that Blast going to get over the wall. Equalizer comes down into Ziv as well. Flash. Frey. That's Frey and Frey just yet waiting for the rain. Ziv will actually just get run down without any further assistance. Picks up a really easy kill, but that was Ziv very overextended. Gray and the rest of LCK now on the tower. Okay, and the rest of the main teammates weren't in position to profit over a teleport coming in from the Katarina, so they should easily get an inner turret, and this is the sort of trade that's more reminiscent of a Korean team playing at their best. It certainly is, and they get the kill, they get the tower, so it's not really much of a trade, it's just a win. Uh, they are definitely looking good here, and Maple hanging out on the side. He wants to see if Faker will come up too far, and if he can get a kill, it's crazy how intense the pace of this game is. It feels like a non-gimmick 5v5. We see a lot of power. The Katarina pick is starting to really rear its potentially ugly head if you're an LCK fan especially and take over the game. And Ice putting down aggressive vision and wanting to get as much control around Baron as possible. All right, you can see the ward in that Baron pit. I mean, we've crested well into mid-game territory. Touched a little bit on how both of these teams want to sort of play the 5v5s. But would you... Do you think it's fair to say scaling is mostly in favor of LCK? Maybe the Ziv late game on Poppy, you could opt, but like, where do you see the scaling and what do you prefer as this game continues to, to time? To me, it's it's for LCK pretty heavily. I think that Twitch outscales the Jin. I think that Victor, as far as teamfight ease, I think that Victor is very, very effective, almost always. And I do think that Rumble as well. I, I like their team across the board a lot in fight. Oh, 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 wow, Casa just absolutely obliterates Trey. Is uh, gonna give up his life in the trade. Oh, still not dead yet. Finally dropped by Faker, but that's exactly what a Black Cleaver Warrior Hex Drinker build does. But it looks cool, but is it worth trading one for one when your jungler is the one that goes down? Now, I'm not saying this will open up Baron, but seeing some other players around the map smaps low. Take a look at that damage. Maple's got a flash. It's a dash away from Zip. Good knocker. Now we jump to the mid lane. Fighting everyone. Fate comes up. Albus slows down Faker. Flashes over the wall. We cut He's back here. the bottom. Maple got the kill onto Smith. Now Bengi should help out. Got the tower behind him as well. Support from the LCK squad coming from the river. Full HP for Mad Life. Faker barely scratched. Death charge. We'll chase Maple as far as he can run. The Dredge line pulls him backwards. Riptide holds him in place. And that's an easy kill. Shut down onto Maple. Ziv's running for his life, but will not escape Faker. That's a very big shield from the buckler, and the gravity field holds him down. Is he going to get the whole wave before he dies? Just Poppy Face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Faker. Didn't your parents ever teach you not to play with your food? This is attention. Ziv's running, trying to escape, but it will eventually get dropped down. Now, there's matters about that, but actually delaying the death timer really helps with Baron control. Yeah. Teleporting in Poppy is enough to stop a Baron, and suddenly, Poppy is 40 seconds away. And we'll be interested to see if that was just a complete manners play by Faker, or if they actually do have aspirations to pick up and set up a Baron right now. And here is where it all started off, and that was such a long chain of events. Karsa does blow his flash, he kills off Prey, but he gives up his life, and it's now the LCK moving for the Baron. So it looked cute, but it was actually strategic, because remember, Poppy is still 20 seconds away. Input fade for Elvis, not available just yet. The peel away from LCK from Baron, they've interrupted it. Maybe he's still got access to the curtain call. 
team fire. They don't get Baron right now. Yeah, I mean, Maple has the TP, so even though Poppy was dead, TP available for her now, and she can join in if they need to, but Maple having that TP, he got there, and it's very risky to go into that Baron pit, get grouped up, have the magic damage debuff on you against someone like a Fed Kevin. And I want to return to your question about scaling, because I think the late, late game, and I know that's this nuanced thing when we're talking about a late, late game, but when Nautilus gets items to basically yeah. shrug off the Katarina, I think that's when Fire have it. But I think mid to late, and even the early late game, actually goes to Team Ice, because when you commit to top lane Rumble, and you have a Rek'Sai who went to your map first, you're not going to be tanky. There's only the Redemption, Aegis and Locket are coming, but I feel like the Poppy can answer a single, but sometimes two threats, on the side of fire, and then Katarina can do the rest of the work. So late, late game, sure. But for now, and especially if they get a Snowball Baron, this could be big for us. Baron's going down fairly quickly. 7,000 HP. Prey said, I am. Prey's available. Goes into the pit, but he's Dead. one shot. Prey is down. That's a kill for the Rainbow. Now the teleport's coming in. Bingy gets knocked up by the Dragon's Rage. BB's down. 80 carries. This could be available. Baron is now being turned on to. Redemption's coming out from the squad. Zev is jumping into the pit. The Verdict not available to him. It looks like Kasa has re-engaged on the Baron. He's on 400 HP. Bengi and Madlife going back in, and everybody breaks away. AD carries trade lives. That was such a crazy fight back and forth. Looks like LMS had it. Then the LCK comes in. Looks like they're going to take over, and uh, Ziv with a fantastic ultimate to disengage that goal. Out of those race times go through now. Ziv is tanky, but how tanky is you're going to find out. Yeah, it takes a lot of damage in front of tanky. four oh. members. <laughs> Alberto have jumped up as well. The tower still sort of the focus, but Elsie can they're looking for kills. Corsa drops down Bengi. Oh, Kevin nice Ray, ultimate. Kevin Smith and Baker. He it can be used. Great binding once again. Locks him up, and the tower still goes down. Here comes Maple. He's jumped in. That's going to be a golden Smith. Not dropped yet. Hourglass buys some time. Finally goes down. The slows come out from the curtain call. Maple gets the slow. That's a double. Looking for more. Ray's now going to run in. Spray and Prey is up. Zip is the target. He will get crit to death as Prey shuts him down, and things are getting very, very messy after 30 minutes. These fights are so hectic. Every time a single member on the LCK squad goes low, both the Jin and the Katarina lick their lips, look for the first kill that starts the inevitable cavalcade, and this is the point where you have to be so selective with your engages if you're the LCK, because Katarina, three core items done, is a beast. Certainly is, and you can see it shown off here. Ziv was so tanky, able to absorb so much of this damage. Goes in, gets a nice slam against the wall onto Banky, and then Albus has been great with his ultimates. Lands the two man binding on both the carries, and then it's Maple's turn. He comes in. Smeb is really greedy. He actually uses the, his ult, the equalizer, purely to try and snipe away the Lee Sin. Whiffs on that, means they don't have it for disengage. The chase down, the chase never stops with Katarina after the rework. And although Prey gets one answering kill and stops perhaps a Baron if the Poppy was to survive, we're so, so even, despite the slender gold lead for LCK. Yeah, we really are, but you do have to worry at some point about the fact that Bebe is not getting any of these kills, really. So many of them are going on at least in, and you do start to fall off pretty hard, I think, the further you get into the game. Thankfully, Maple is massive, but Jin is going to have to be a factor. Yeah, he is. But guys, we haven't spoken about the elephant in the room. Despite the fact it feels like LMS and LCK are even, it's five towers to one. Yeah. LMS have got so much territory to cover. I don't remember when the last time they were even in the river this game was. But standing gold is something where you look at it and you're like, okay, they're going to be able to they win a team fight, take a lot of turrets, but sieging is desperately poor. Katarina may be able to team fight, still a melee champion. Poppy, melee champion. Lee Sin, a melee champion. And Jin has never been particularly strong at taking turrets, specifically on his own. So for now, Sieging's not an option, only team fighting. So the standing gold may actually take a long time. This game might have really been decided by a big team fight and a Baron before we actually see three outer turrets down for LMS. Watch of that, 33 minutes, the Baron fight is looming. Ziv is going to be backing away. Teleport is available for Maple in a few seconds, and Smebs is closer to Ziv's timing. So uh, if anybody's out of position, and that option could go 1 minute 50 until Elder Dragon. So that's also going to complicate the situation because both teams have got decent enough dragons. Uh, not exactly game-ending to pick up Elder, but definitely helps you get the next big objective. 
Yeah, and th that's what you're looking to do. If you can get the Elder, chain that into a Baron, then quickly push, it it's what you can unlock with the Elder. One little item we should talk about. Banner of Command finish for Poppy. The AP obviously going to waste, but Rumble will have a hell of a time pushing back a bannered up minion because only a magic damage dealer outside of those auto attacks. So you'll need to complete and force Ray's Rumble side lane. Yeah, Praise Lord! Prey got pinned against the wall and he's down. Now it's a 5v4. Faker's already running for his life. Keeper's verdict has already booted the LCK away. Smith burned the equalizer. Not gonna get caught this time around. It's a trade. Sibs lost his life. Faker turns it back onto Albus. Where is BBM Maple? They're splitting up, running away from the Chaos Storm. No binding stun yet. And LMS, they couldn't run into the damage. It was a great start to the fight, but Maple TP'd and he could never get in. Oh! Faker with the assassination on Albus. The Lich Bane really just destroying Albus. Maybe flashes away. Maple's looking for an opportunity. Where's the preparation dagger? Holding on to it for now. Carcer uses the kick. Remember, there's no tanky stats. He just goes down. Maple's gonna get caught up by the mine. And four members of LCK. That's a delayed ace. LCK, they've broken open the base. Because it's 35 minutes and it's Lich Bane Faker. They might actually try and finish the game here. It felt like it was slowly, slowly creeping to the LMS, but one mistake and the game may be over. It absolutely is. Bibi gets flashed on. That's the ace. LCK and Team Fire drop the first Nexus turret, take down the second. Here comes Zip, gonna try to buy some time. Gravity Field pulls him back in. Albus has got a few seconds up, but it will not be enough. A support versus the LCK. The Nexus is being burned down despite the small hopes and the attempts from the LMS. It is the LCK that will slowly hammer away, dropping Team Ice and taking 100 points for Fire. Fantastic game there. We got to see the first Katarina come out here at All Stars. Worked out great for Maple, but there's just not much you can do without the help of your team there. And, and we should see some of the weaknesses, right? You need to have people low on health. You need to have your team doing damage for you. You can't be the initiator. And in that last fight, it all fell apart. And there was frustration on the faces of the LMS team. They smelled a victory. They saw yeah. where they could win the game. But we focused on the fact that those were, there were those turrets up for so long. There was that standing gold that wasn't able to be accessed because they had a squad that couldn't actually push down turrets. However,